Welcome again to Canada's Digital Farm Show, the Baylor Demonstration. And with me now is Travis Group. Thank you very much, Travis and Kubota for being here. You're the product specialist for Hay Tools in Canada. So what does that mean? How big an area to have? What do you have to do? That's right, Pat. Uh, so I am the product specialist for Hay Tools for all of Canada. So I deal mainly with the factories on introducing product and having the right promotional equipment for, for Canada. Well, we certainly want to thank you and appreciate the fact that you're part of this digital presentation. However, we want to be talking a little bit about balers and, you know, in the background is the MF-152. Uh, just a point, how many horsepower do we have here, Travis? Yeah, Pat, so this is an M7, a Kubota M7-152, 150 being 150 horsepower, two being the second generation. This particular tractor here is a deluxe. So that means it's uh, we kind of have a higher capacity hydraulic flow on it, but all the simplicity of manual valves. So, so a lot less electronic. How many horsepower do we need for this baler? So this is kind of the minimum tractor we want on it. Ideally, we'd have 170 out here. Uh, we're looking about 150 PTO horsepower for this baler to operate properly. So Travis, we're going to walk down here a little bit towards the baler. And the first obvious question is, it's called a fast bale. Come on now. Why is it called a fast bale? Well, why would you call it anything but fast bale? Because it is fast. It's, how, uh, how fast is it, Travis? Well, a typical a typical operator could get about 60 bales, 60 bales an hour. That's wrapped, Pat. That's so, not just baled. That's wrapped. Baled and wrapped. That's that's pretty uh, phenomenal. Pretty awesome numbers. So part of balers is certainly the intake. And just tell me a little bit about your pickup in the intake on this baler. Yeah, so a couple key features on this pickup is an 86 inch wide pickup, um, gives us lots of capacity when we're picking up wind rows, uh, has a 300 mil uh, uh, intake rotor that gives us good capacity in the machine, plus a 25 knife cutting system. Part and parcel of baling is lubrication. So just show us where your lubrication system is and yep. what does it consist of? Do you want to open yeah, it up? Yeah, that's right, Pat. So this is a commercial, it was designed as a commercial baler. So what we have is we have an automatic oiling and greasing system built in. So the farmer doesn't have to do any, uh, there's, there's some daily maintenance, but these are focusing on the main chamber bearings and all the chains. So we make sure that all that stuff gets well lubed because it's getting, it's rotating quite frequently. So, so wanna, what determines how much lubrication and when it goes on? So it simply works based on the rotation of the PTO. So as, as long as the baler's running, it's greasing. It doesn't matter if it's baling or uh, just uh, going down the headland with uh, not baling anything. And so, so as long as things are going around, it's yeah, counting that. Exactly. So as long as it's <laughs> rotating, we're greasing. Travis, I like this. Um, diagrams that you have here on the fast bale and can you just explain to us with this diagram how the bales are made what's going on yeah that's the beauty of this uh, baler it's hard to see what's going on but this de decal does a really good job of explaining how the machine works so think of it basically as two balers built into one along with a wrapper on the back so we have a pre-chamber that makes about two-thirds the finished bale once that, bale, once that chamber is full, it transfers it to the back. It's not tied at that point. It's simply just transferred a, a pre-compressed bale. It moves it in the back. We finish off that four by four size bale, uh, put the net on. And while we're putting the net on, we uh, transfer back to the front. So does the net go on here before it gets wrapped? Yes, so we put either a net wrap on. There is also the option to put a film on film system, which allows us to, the film on film typically keeps the bale a little bit more together or a better shape um, it also seals off better so it's a it's a it ends up ends up creating a higher pro quality product at the end because it's well sealed travis just explain in layman's terms how the wrapper works so that's the other key thing of this machine is we have a wrapper on the back it's got twin wrapping arms so it gives us high capacity um, that's kind of the limitation when it comes to these equipment is the wrapping uh, it, it needs to keep up we can bail really fast we we've seen some pretty phenomenal numbers on bailing it's just the wrapping you have some limitations on uh, conditions and all that stuff so um, but that gives us that capacity to wrap those bales plus it's a nice tight package so it is a big baler but we can fit anywhere down the road in different gates just because it's such a small short machine so how big uh, of issue is it to go from wrapping to not wrapping and then back wrapping again. So that's the beauty of it. You can run this machine, the, that wrapping, the wrapper 
will actually act as an accumulator. Yeah. So you could actually have it grab one unwrapped bale on the back. When you have the set, the bale finished in the main chamber, you can drop one and then the second, making pickup nice. in the field a lot easier. So nice. it is capable of doing dry hay. It was designed initially more for silage application, haylage applications, higher, higher moisture crops. But we've done, we've run straw through this. We've run dry hay. It's quite capable. Um, they're just, there's always a little bit of tweaking, just to adjust the right settings to... So you would have no problem making corn silage with this machine or haylage? No, if you could feed it in the machine, we essentially could bale it. We could do hemp if you really, if it really came <laughs> down to it. So we may, lots of flexibility. We may. Travis, you know, I, I'm a communicator and, and not a baler. What did I not ask you about this baler? What do you wish that people knew about it? So the, the one thing is everybody sees this as a complicated piece of equipment. But the one, the, the huge thing about it is they've made it so user friendly. So it's a matter of just driving down the field. There's no watching to make sure the baler's tied, grabbing the brakes to stop. It simply beats at, beeps at you to tell you that you, you, it's doing something. So the operator is able to focus on driving, you know, making sure the bales are made properly, uh, drop, you know, whether he's dropping them on the headlands or he wants to drop them straight. All he has to do is focus on driving. He doesn't have to worry about what the baler's doing behind him. He's got a camera, so you can see at the back. You notice it's a big baler. Yes. We can't see out the back, so we put a camera there. When we're wrapping, if a film breaks or something, it'll give you an alert. You can decide whether to keep going, or you just go back, change them, go back to the cab, and keep wrapping. So it makes it okay. a very easy process to... So, Travis, now I understand why it's logically called a fast bale. Yeah. So this is Patrick Lynch with Canada's Digital Farm Show. I want to thank... Um, Travis and Kubota for taking their time to be part of this show. So thanks again, thanks Travis, Travis too, and Kubota. Thank thanks you for much. having us, Pat.